Um, Michelle um, is going to present her assessment and I'm going to record it. And is it all right, Michelle, if I put it out for students to look at it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So now I'm going to share the assessment uploaded to the Study Smart, and um, Michelle's going to present it. Are you ready to do that? Yes, I am ready. Okay. So can you see it, guys? So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So I'm just going to my, make it full view. Okay. Beautiful. Now, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Um, so I have chosen a chair from the Art Deco um, design period. This is the Biltmore Lounge Chair by Kem Weber, um, or Carl Emanuel Martin Weber. Um, it was a chair designed for the Arizona Biltmore Hotel, which is a, a beautiful piece of um, Art Deco architecture, um, in, also built in 1929, the same as the chair. Um, main elements of, of this chair, like Art Deco, was all about geometric shapes. Um, you can see in the arms, the armrests, it's very angular and very bold as well. There's uh, the thick timber rather than being flimsy or, or anything like that. Um, and then using leather for the seat, I guess because it was a hotel chair, they want it to be a bit more durable. Um, and with the curve of the back as well is also very typical of, of that design period. Um, and going to the, the second page. Yeah, great yeah. selection, by the way. Guys, what do you think, Suan? Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, it's a beautiful art deco piece, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, like those yes. It's yeah. mm -hmm. So next page we go. Yep, next page. Can you see? Um, mine's still stuck on the first page. Okay. The video might be... Um, I'll just try to do it again. I actually think that my... Um, once again, I'll just try to do this one. Just have a look. Have a look. Can you see it now? Mine's froze. Oh, yeah. There we go. It was just being a bit slow. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's better. Um, so with, with redesigning the lounge, I wanted to keep it, um, keep the main elements of the, the thick armrests and, and the basic shape of it, but extend it out to be a larger lounge um, rather than just a, a one-person chair. Um, to fit you know two to three people um preferably in a setting where they can relax you know in a, in a family room or, or a lounge room to watch tv or read a book um and so the change main changes i made was uh well continuing that curve around in the back um and fanning the armrests out a little bit rather than it finishing on a, a forward angle they they fan out um, and then also mirroring that angle um, in the legs and also for the back of the chair, leaning it backwards. I probably should have included a side-on sketch as well to show what I meant with that. Um, sorry, my son's feeding is being a bit loud. Um, okay. With, <laughs> with fabric um, being more of a, I guess, a comfortable setting, I chose to change from leather to being a, a cotton um, covering for the, the backrest and the seat, um, but then thought that I'd reference the Art Deco period by making some cushions um, using an Art Deco style pattern. So the, the gold and um, orange fabrics pattern down the, on the bottom right there. Um, that would also add a bit more comfort to the armrests considering they are wood, um, may not be very comfortable to lean against while watching television, um, so adding them in as a, as a feature. Um, and then the next page. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to see if I can get to the next page. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful. Can you see it? Yep, that's come up. Yep. So there's uh, a finished um, model of, 
of the idea that I had um, to make. <laughs> so it still fits within the Art Deco style with or without the cushions there. Um, what I would do next time or, or for further um, sketches and ideating is, is I'd curve the armrests in a bit more. Um, I feel like they're, they're a little bit too fanned out so you wouldn't actually be able to get any support from them um, while leaning against them. Uh, other than that, I'm really happy with how the model turned out and, and it turned out exactly how I envisaged it. Um, except one of the cushions is upside down. <laughs> Apart from that, <laughs> I think it's turned out really well. Um, and I think the colours colours that I chose, um, they're a little bit more modern, but they're still complementary of, um, of Art Deco and, and referencing the period there. So this is my even more lounge, my take on the bit more lounge. <laughs> Guys, do you have any questions to Michelle? Anyone? <laughs> Um, I have a question, Michelle. So what material did you use for the structure of the uh, 3D model? I used a modelling clay. Um, it's a, a plastic-based clay. I got the, the idea from a, a video that you posted on the Martin College Facebook page. Um, it was a tutorial on there on how to use polymer clay. Um, it was the first time I've ever used it and I ran into many many obstacles um, but but I think it's it's really worth giving a go um, main obstacle was I didn't buy the right glue so there's some very well hidden sticky tape in that photo <laughs> okay so <laughs> did you put any wire into the structure prior you actually bent it or not no no I didn't so that's that's a learning curve there mm -hmm. um, yeah, because guys, if you have something like that structural, it's a good idea to actually roll the clay around the wire structure, if it makes sense, and make kind of like a long rolls um, of clay around the wire. Yes, very good idea. And then it will hold any structure you really want, and you can build up on that structure the more you go. But I think it turned out very well, and so was the... Um, how did you actually produce the seat? The seat? Um, I, I made, um, with the clay, I made the basic shape of the seat, just a flat um, piece. And then I, I used what's it called, cotton, and I just padded it out with, with some cotton and glued the, the fabric over the top. Very to good. It. Yeah, very good. Same um, with the back. Yes. A, a curved piece. Yeah. So what's the size of the model? Oh, in, in centimetres? <laughs> yeah, approximately. I just want to... Approximately. It's, um, the seat there is about 13 centimetres. Um, okay. And each of those cushions, they're, they're six centimetres as a square. So that's, that's the size there. I, um, I made it in reverse. I made the cushions first. Um, just because on that particular day, um, my son was a little bit needy. So all I could do was lay in bed with him and sew. Um, so I made the cushions first and, and then the chair model um, I tried to make to fit the cushions, but it is a bit small. Um, so again, next time I think doing the, the added bits, I'll do them after the main structures. Yeah, um, a little bit if you compare to the sketch, they are a little bit out of scale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they are definitely, and uh, unfortunately, I'm a bit disappointed by that, but um, very happy with the miniature cushions on their own. Yeah. Well, a good job, Michelle. I really liked it. I really liked your choice. I like how you turn it into the sofa. I like your model. You've done fantastically well, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback as well. <laughs> no worries. So now we have um, Sue Ann. Sue Ann, um, would you like to share um, your document so we can all talk about it? Um, so I've only got my sketches in my workbook at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I haven't loaded them just in case I need to do something with them first. <laughs> yes. Okay. So 
think that can be loud. Yep. And I might need to turn the light. So I'll just be back in a second. Now I'll try to make it big, just quickly, and um, and I might just try to share it if I can. You can share. I'm not sure, Sian, if I can actually share it, your video. Uh, I can email it. I took two photos earlier. Yeah. If it's not too hard, can you please email it to me? Or I wonder if you can message it to me because I never used that option. So where is our messaging? Mm. Let's see if there's a, is there a messaging option? Oh, share. Not share. Can I start screen share? Well, other participants yeah, share. start screen share. Mm. Just have a look at it oh. if we can okay. see it. But I'm not sure if other participants can see you. Guys, can you see it? Michelle, can you see Suan's video? <laughs> um, I can see it on the right. I can't see it as the main screen. My my internet's being a bit slow, but I can see on the right hand side of the screen a small. All right, I can. Try to make it big. Maybe soon if you can just email it to me quickly, and then just stop recording quickly. Okay, so just wait till um, Sian will email it to me. Okay, and I'm just going to check the email. Sorry, still loading it. Okay. Our towers have been a bit slow around here lately since we had storms last week. <laughs> yes. Can you see guys turn now or not on the big screen? Um, not at the moment. She did pop up there for a second. Okay, so it does not work exactly. That should be no Lawrence is no. Okay, so we'll just wait till soon uh, email it to me. Meanwhile, guys, do you have any questions? Um, not at the moment, no. Okay, so uh, with your assessment due dates, are you all familiar with your due dates? Yeah, yeah, I'm, um, I'm all good with that. Okay, so just a quick reminder to you guys, if you run in late with your uh, last assessment, um, then you need to submit a um, assessment extension form, okay, which is available for you in the student um, support area. If you have problem finding it, just email it to me and I'll just email the link to you. I have a question for, from Lauren. Am I able to pre-record my assessment and email it to you or are we presenting via chat like this? Um, so what we basically do, it's great to present it via chat because other students can see it and you can receive the feedback instantly and I can go and mark it. Um, and Emily has the same question. Uh, but you still need to give me your uh, presentation speech. So um, you are all guys at the different stages of the course. That's what Emily was asking me. Um, so you have the same course, but uh, we enroll students every two weeks. So I have students uh, who started earlier and I have students who started later, but we're all looking at the same assessments and I have students from the next subject as well. 
So what we do on Thursdays, we actually meet up to have a good conversation together and have a look at all the assessments. And then what I basically do, I record it and I upload it to the Study Smart forum and to the YouTube channel, which we have. And then you can come back and watch it at any time. Okay? So um, those meetings are very important for you guys because this is your chance to ask the questions and receive the answers instantly, okay? And also run with your assessments. The assessments which require uh, oral presentation, it means that you need to actually write down your presentation and upload it all together with your assessment um, task completed into the uh, study smart, okay, in the document. Um, I can assess it from the document, but I would prefer you to come to the um, online sessions on Thursdays. So we need okay. to present it um, and also upload what we, our speech. Yes, it's great to upload your speech because it's a part of your presentation. Now, I received Sian's drawings and we're going to talk about it in a minute. They're downloading. Um, now, guys, if you have any questions and you're struggling with the assessment and you're not sure if you want to, are uh, ready to submit it or not, what you can do is basically either email it to me uh, and ask the question uh, with the assessment or also a good idea is upload it into the ePortfolio and that way I will have an evidence of your submission in ePortfolio as well, okay, which would be great. Um, and it's better than emailing to me, okay? And then we can work from there. Okay, so here is the, um, okay. So guys, I'm going to share Sue Ann's um, preliminary assessment attempt. Is it assessment number three, Sue Ann? Is it correct? Yeah, it's just the technical drawings. That the other parts I've got on the computer. Okay. The ones uh, to, going to, I'm going to have to patch yes. together to, to scan them in. <laughs> yeah, sure. Now, tell me if you can see the technical drawing. Just going to make it a little bit bigger. Guys, can you see it? Yes, yes. Okay. So, Sian, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so what's the question? I just want to make sure I was on the right track with the drawing. I've not done technical drawing before. I've only used mm -hmm. um, software on a computer, um, mm -hmm. which is what I started off with, so I could actually get a feel for the space. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so by looking at it... So I've, I've just labelled numbers. Yeah. Um, okay, I like the... I like that you place the kitchen island in the center. It's good. Um, now, the problem with the labeling here, it's a bit confusing because the labeling should be something one out of two, two, three out of two, and etc. cetera. Uh, three, three out of three and etc. cetera. Okay. Okay. So I'm just trying to find where you actually reference the elevations to. So um, the drawing is fine. I have no problem with the design. It's just the um, the elevation referencing. That's my problem. Okay. Okay. Now... But I didn't know how to do the elevation referencing with the island. If All of sense. them. They shouldn't be F, A, E, D and B, C. So if I have a look at the second drawing, just quickly because yep. and the elevations as well. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate it and share and just see whether you guys. Now, can you see the second drawing, guys, or not? Can you see the other drawing? Probably not. I'm just going to share it again with you. A little bit smaller. <laughs> okay, now have a look. Can you see it? Yep. Yep. So I'm just going to make it bigger. I'm just going to move it up and down. Okay. So I see how your elevation A scale 1 to 20. Okay. Yeah. You basically need to have three elevations there, Sue. So yeah, I've got another page. 
<coughs> yeah, um, that I haven't but, um, done. I like okay. I've, I haven't uh, taken a photo of. Yeah. Um, it's the it's the third elevation, but there's actually going to be six elevations because of the island. Now, this is where you got confused because yep. the island does not belong to the elevation. Okay. Why? Because what belongs to the elevation, it's something that it's actually touched to the wall or next to the wall. Okay. And so I just don't include the, the no, um, elevation of the No, room. because we okay. only need to see those three walls. If we guys, uh, for some of you guys who hasn't started this assessment, it's assessment number three and you need to actually design a kitchen plan. And if we come back to the floor plan again, and I'm just going to share it with you again so we can see it. So have a look at the floor plan. Can you see it, guys, now? Yep. Back to the first. Okay. So basically, very simple uh, floor plan here. So you can see here that there is one wall. Can you see my cursor? Yep. Okay, and uh, your A actually points into that wall. Yeah. Then we have a second wall, and your B points into that wall, and then we have a third wall, and your C points into that wall. So elevation is something that belongs to the wall, but in the same time belongs to the floor plan. But something like freestanding, like a uh, kitchen island, does not belong to the elevation. Okay. Okay, so think that's why you don't need to worry about it. So I'm thinking, like, what is this EFD? <laughs> it was a so, different way I, I found online and how they actually did the, the uh, island. So it's like, oh, okay, well, I thought I'd better do the island because <laughs> I hadn't seen how to do the island. <laughs> no, you didn't. I don't need to include it. <laughs> no, you don't even need to do the island. All you need to do is just an elevation itself. And so all we want to see is those three walls and what they look like when you look at them, okay? okay. So if okay. you also refer back, if I open up the floor plans quickly and I'll just want to show you how they need to be labelled that would be great. So if you label them appropriately, not A, B, C, I'm just going to follow the example we have. So we go, I think it was one of two, two or two and three of two. Yes, exactly. And it does not look like one uh, letter. It's, um, it's a different yeah. story. Okay. I'm just going to share that with you quickly. Or one of them. Okay. Okay, so this is a PDF document. Okay. So the files you actually supplied with are I'm just going to share it with you quickly. Where is it? Right here. Okay, can you see the PDF document? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. So can you see how elevation is actually labeled? It says one of two. Elevation one. Okay, and then it goes two of two, elevation two, and that's it. And three of two, elevation three. So you need to follow that labeling, okay, for your elevations. Okay, so this is your elevation. So once again, elevation is something that facing the wall, which is next to the wall. Like if you have a couch and the window that will belong to the wall because it's close to the wall, but not something that's standing in the center of the a room, like say a coffee table, it won't belong to the elevation. You understand guys now? I think so, yeah. Yeah, now if we have a look at the same, have this reference to the floor plan, so we just have a look at elevation and views have the reference to the floor plan. I'm just going to share with you another document of the floor plan for the same assessment. And then everything will be clear for you. Okay, so here it is. I'm just doing a new share. Here it is. Okay, so can you see the floor plan? Yep. Okay. So basically what it shows you here, you basically need to place the numbers. So obviously retrospective to 
the elevation view. So obviously that number which is facing up to this wall, if you can see my cursor will be one, then two facing that wall, and the small wall will be number three. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, so you understand now. And then when we come back to the elevation view, we can see what we're actually looking at. So this little thing in the house here and actually depicted it is actually an eye. It's an open eye looking at that particular wall. Okay? Yep. Okay, any more questions uh, about this assessment? Just at the bottom of each of the, the um, drawings that you guys supplied, um, the labeling mm -hmm. um, where it says a drawing, that sort of thing, should we be doing that on our drawings as well? No, no, you don't need to do that, no. You mean the, the badge in, on the bottom of the page? No, yeah. no. Uh, you will enjoy the the techni room. technical oh, drawing, guys, in the next subject, so don't indulge in that yet. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> yes, yeah. you will have plenty of Thank it. You. <laughs> don't worry. Oh. No, we just want to see whether you understand elevation and the floor plan and how you can design the kitchen around it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Any more questions? No, thank you very much for, for that. No problem. Any more questions, guys? You can type if you have any questions. I don't have anything else to ask at this stage. Excellent. So are you enjoying the course so far? Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's a bit difficult um, with the baby, but I'm getting through, <laughs> getting through it. Absolutely, guys. If you have any problems in your life, if you have, a, you have to stop your study or you have to, you know, uh, have a break for some reason, I understand it perfectly and we all understand it and the spa understand it. So as long as you apply for the extension with a um, strong enough reason why you can do it, we can always extend it, okay, for you. So and I'm here to help you. So email to me and I'll reply to your emails as soon as possible. And I always on Thursday will have a session. Okay. Sounds good. Very good. Excellent, guys. Actually, uh, yeah. Paulina, yeah. Uh, for my, for my, um, my number, my fourth assignment and having to share my um, portfolio. Yes. Um, any suggestions on who I should share it with? You share it with me. So you basically, when you go to ePortfolio, yep. you, there is a button share with, and you need to type uh, my name and it should pop yep. up. Or your facilitator, it should pop up. If you type that's my right. name, yeah. yeah, that's it. If yep. you made I any share it with friends, you, so that's all good. <laughs> yeah, the other thing, if you made yep. any friends on uh, ePortfolio, which you can make, like it's, it's an advanced option. <laughs> okay. You will, you will explore it later. And um, I mean, you can make friends with other students in the group if you remember their names. Um, and, um, and then you can just share it. I've already found Michelle on Facebook. Yeah, we're friends. We go way back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> we're coasties. <laughs> yeah, coasties for life. Central Coast. Excellent. <laughs> So you guys can uh, share between each other, but yeah, basically just share it with me. And if you want to share with other students and okay. find out their names, just join our Facebook page and just chat um, to them. And I think it's a good idea to have a good cohort who's okay. everybody talking to each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay, any more questions, guys? Good moral support. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any more questions for today? I'm good, but thanks. Thank you. Oh, good. No worries. So, guys, have a lovely weekend, the long weekend. Enjoy it. Don't forget your homework and your assessments. Being a teacher, I have to remind you. And, um, yeah, see you next week. Okay, thank you. No worries.